a way there of Agassi and Sampras and Courier. And now, waiting in the wings, waiting to seize the moment, is the new generation of American men. There is definitely talk that these are the young Americans and that these guys are coming. Fear might be the wrong word, but an awareness that, uh, you know, there's a new group coming on and that uh, these guys got game. And the game is tennis. The powerful, passionate, made in the USA variety. Robbie Ginepri, Marty Fish, Brian Bahaley, Taylor Dent, Jan Michael Gamble, and James Blake are all up and coming 20 somethings. And these days, they take the court armed with something extra to inspire them a role model who has emerged from their own ranks. I think it's been a huge boost to the other guys' morale when they see Andy Roddick up there consistently doing well. He certainly raised the bar and set the bar. And now the other guys are trying to catch up. Two years ago when I made my big jump from, you know, 160 to in the top 15, I was pretty much the only young American that, that was playing well and winning winning matches consistently on tour. James started playing well last year, and then this year it's kind of just opened the floodgates. We were all hearing the, when are we going to replace Pete and Andre talk, and then Andy broke through and uh, did it on his own and carried that weight for a little while without any of us, and that just made us all realize that you know, this is the guy that came through the challenges with us. We can do this too. You know, it could have been any one of us, and, uh, you know, I was just lucky enough to kind of maybe not get stuck in the challengers for too long and, you know, kind of just break through, break through pretty quickly. They're seeing the success of each other and then it inspires them to, to get some of that success because they know that they're just as good, better in some situations, not as good in others as, as the rest of these guys. First time I played Robbie Ginepri, I was, we were 11 years old, you know, so that's kind of special for us to look back, you know, nine, ten years ago and say we played for the first time and now we're both, you know, playing pretty well on tour. And uh, Marty Fish lived at my house for about nine months in our junior year of high school. You know, I, I don't know if it's a coincidence that the guys I was kind of close with before, we've all kind of come up together, but it's, it's pretty neat. These guys are friends and they, they get along really well together and they're kids. <laughs> nice yeah. response. I swear to God, he's got the biggest piece of food in this team. <laughs> Marty, yeah. that's good. They are bound together by the common experience of the Challenger circuit, the Pro Tour's minor leagues, where rivalries ripen and friendships are reinforced. This is them sort of growing up, and growing up in, in a professional tennis environment is, is different, it's unique, it's got its serious challenges, um, but it's also can be a lot of fun. I think because we all came through the challenges together, I don't know if those guys in the past generation did that. That's where you really make, I think, some of your best friends, because you're all out there doing it for the love of the sport. It really does feel like a team when you're together with Marty and Andy and Robbie and all the guys. I don't see this changing no matter how much money the guys make, how much celebrity they get, whatever happens, how many titles they win. I think we got friends for life. There's no shortage of confidence in this group, but it's tempered by a sense of perspective. They have some tough American acts to follow. Probably none of them are gonna be as good as Sampras or, or Agassi, but so what? I've always said that American tennis fans have been spoiled in the best possible way. I don't think anybody's gonna replace Andre or Pete, and if uh, you know one or two out of our group does, that's you know it's amazing. You know, and I think that's more than any of us expect. And uh, you know, people just have to realize, you know, you can't replace Michael Jordan in a day. These guys have a lot of potential to be great players, and I think that that all of them have a chance to be real factors and, and possibly win a Grand Slam, maybe win more. We we won't know until it, it, ten years has passed by how good they could be. And I truly feel that the best is yet to come for these guys. Let's steal. <laughs> Guy who, of course, has goofed around with that group as well as counseled and coached them. Uh, Davis Cup captain Patrick McEnroe. You know, Dent and Gamble have titles in 2003, but those were not in Europe on clay. Roddick did just come off his first title outside of the U.S., winning mm -hmm. a clay event in Austria. But what are your expectations on clay for these guys? Well, the expectations here are not as high, Chris, quite honestly. Uh, they play better on fast course, most of these guys. But certainly Andy Roddick can play very well on clay. He's the guy with the best chance. James Blake, to me, has been a little disappointing this year on the clay because I think, other than Andy Roddick, his game is very well suited to clay. He's got a big 
big forehand. He moves exceptionally well. Did well last year on the clay. So they've underachieved a little bit in my mind on the dirt so far. But you know what? You can turn all that around in these two weeks right here. Why don't you teach Blake some patience? <laughs> he knows that's the problem on the surface. He'll take on Dent. They draw each other in the first round. Dent's a guy who has not won a match on clay in his life. We'll take you out there when we come back. Opening day of the 2003 French Open. Better than ever. The WNBA starts June 5th.